Hi everyone, just wanted to take a minute to talk a little bit about exponential growth and exponential decay, which are some applications of exponential functions um, with real world scenarios. So as a reminder, exponential functions are of the form um, f of x is going to be equal to a times b to the x, um, where a is going to be your initial amount or your um, principal amount or starting value, um, something written like that. And b is going to be your ratio, um, and that is kind of that's what you're raising to the exponent, right? And as we remember, when b was greater than one, you know we had something that looked like that, and when b when b was less than one, we had something that kind of was going down instead, right? It's decreasing. So when it's greater than one, it's increasing. When it's less than one, it is decreasing. So those two pieces of information. Um, go hand in hand with exponential growth and decay. So when we're talking about exponential growth and decay, we still have our A being our initial value, that's kind of our starting point, like for example, our starting population, our starting car value, our um, starting amount of money, something like that. Um, and B now is going to be the rate of, uh, the, the, rate, the growth factor, the decay factor. Um, so the way that we're going to express this comes in this form. So when you're dealing with exponential growth and decay, you're going to have B written as either 1 plus your rate or 1 minus your rate. Now, obviously here, B, when we're adding, it's going to be bigger than 1. So this is going to be growth, right? And we're calling this growth because as we remember from our graph, it's increasing, so it's getting bigger. This one is going to be less than one, right? You take one minus a number, it's going to be less than one. Um, it is going to be decay. So this one is going to be our decay. So we're going to decrease. Um, so the way that these will ultimately work will be uh, if you ever read a problem, if you get an initial amount of, say, a... Um, you know, growth in value, right? And you knew at initial value of 8,800, right? That's gonna go out in front of what's going on here with your factor. So when we get a problem like this, it says given the following exponential function, identify whether the change represents the growth or decay and determine the percentage rate of increase or decrease. So what do we really care about? We don't actually care as much about what's going on out here for determining whether or not this is growth or decay. Uh, what we care about is what's happening inside the parentheses. That number is less than one, so we already know it is going to be a decay. Now, we need to figure out what it's going to be, um, and we want a percent, right? So essentially, what are we looking at here? We know that my b is 0.93. So that's equal to one minus r, okay? I subtract one, subtract one, I get negative 0 0.07 is equal to negative r. My r is going to be equal to 0 0.07, but I want that as a percent, so my r is going to be 7%. So essentially what this is saying is I have a 7% decrease um, for each iteration, okay? So, got it. And as you can see here, Decay, less than one. Um, one minus r has to ultimately equal 0.93, so that must mean that it's 0 0.07. All right, let's do another one. Now, again, the number out front does not influence whether or not it is uh, growth or decay. Um, the number inside will factor here. So I know that 0.175 has to be equal to 1, and it is bigger than 1, so it is growth, plus r. So that would mean that my r is going to be equal to 0.75, so r is going to be equal to 75%. So that's a that's a pretty hefty growth rate, right? When you have something raising by 75%, that, that's very significant. Um, that's going to get very big very quickly. Okay, so you get the idea on that. Now, one of the most common examples in terms of um, exponential growth and decay come down to the example of compound interest. So if we look at compound interest, uh, the way that the formula is written is as follows. So the amount at the end of the time period is equal to the principal 
which is the initial, right? Principal or initial amount times. Right, you can already see this is very close to um, what we had been writing for the compound, I'm sorry, for the growth and decay. The only difference is now we're dividing by the, the rate by n. The n is just going to be the number of times that you are uh, compounding each year. So if you're only compounding once each year, it'd be one, and it would be exactly as uh, written with the other problem with the growth, okay? Um, if you're compounding, you know, semi-annually, that means you're compounding twice. If you're compounding quarterly, four times. Monthly, 12 times. Uh, yeah, so anything like that. Every two months, six times. All right, so let's look at what we have going on here. So we have that Henry is investing 59000 in an account paying an interest rate of 2% compounded quarterly. So compounded quarterly, by the way, when you see that, will mean four times a year. Okay, so roughly every three months. Assuming no deposits or withdrawals are made, how much money to the nearest cent would be in the account after 20 years? So the way this is going to work is my number of years is always equal to T. So this is going to be my T. Okay? This right here, this is my R, equal to 2%, which is equal to 0 0.02%. Uh, not percent, sorry, 0.02. Um, my principal is going to be 59,000, and it's compounded four times. Again, quarterly means four. So all we're going to do is we're going to plug it in. When we simplify this, you can then use a calculator, and you'll get a, a pretty big number. All right? Now, you will need to use a calculator for these, so don't just try and do this by hand. You'll be here all day. All right. So let's do one out ourselves. Let's go back to the questions. Let's do this one. Okay, we are investing $3,320 in an account paying an interest rate of 1.5% compounded annually. Assuming no deposits or withdrawals are made, how much money to the nearest $100, be careful what it tells you to round to, this one's telling us to the nearest 100, uh, would be in the account after 18 years. So let's just set up what we know. Our P is going to be 320, our rate, is going to be 1.5%, which is equal to 0 0.015. Right, one, two, yep, hold on. Our, what's left? Uh, T is 18, and it's compounded annually, which is great to know. When you see that it's compounded annually, it's only compounded once a year. So let's set it up. My amount at the end is going to be equal to my 320, times 1 plus 0 0.015 divided by 1 raised to the 18 times 1. So that would be 320 times 1.015 raised to the 18, which, when I plug that into a calculator, um, 320, or you could use Google or Desmos or something like that, 1.015 to the 18 would ultimately be 418.349. Now it wants us to round to the nearest $100, so it wants 400. Let me just make sure I rounded that correctly, and we are good. So let's just double check and go through it. So again, it's compounded annually, so we have a rate of um, 0.015, and we don't have to do anything to it because it only goes in one time a year. Um, we'll get three, 418, which rounds us to 400. All right, let's do one more. Okay, so we have $8,400. That is going to be my P and an uh, interest rate here of 5.4%, um, and it's compounded quarterly, so our N is equal to 4. Okay, uh, to the nearest $10 equal in T years, 13 years. So let's plug this in. A is going to be equal to 8400 times 1 plus 0 0.054 over 4. Remember, I have to do it divided by N to the 4 times 13. 
as you can see here, if you, the more you compound or the more frequently you compound, the, um, the bigger this is going to get quickly. So when I divide that by four, uh, this ends up being 0 0.0135 raised to the, what's that, 52? Okay, 8400 zero zero times 1.0135 raised to the 52nd power, and that is ultimately going to be equal to 16,869.98 cents. Now, uh, it wants me to round to the nearest 10, so that would be 16,870. Make sure I did that correctly, and we are good. All right, so there are some applications of um, exponential growth and decay. Uh, please make sure to reach out if you have any questions and have a great day.